Uh, you conduct business before the Fed have for many years. You know how it works. What are the practical effects of this holding up for, uh, we don't know how long, of these five nominations? Well, David, a pleasure to be with you, and you just uh, raised the right question for how long. Uh, certainly, the Federal Reserve can act uh, both on the monetary side and the regulation side in its current status, and I'm sure it will act. But obviously, fighting inflation is our most pressing economic uh, problem. And I just have to believe that the Federal Reserve would act on a more informed basis and would have more credibility if you did have a confirmed chair, if you did have a confirmed vice chair, and as full a complement of Federal Reserve governors as possible. And I think even the Federal Reserve may believe itself uh, a bit constrained without uh, these confirmations going through. So the, obviously, we're all focused, Raj, as you know, on the monetary policy, given where we are with inflation right now. But as you're the first to point out, there's a lot of business to be done other than monetary policy, particularly when you're talking about the vice chair for supervision. Absolutely, David. And, and that is where I think the absence of confirmation will be felt most. Uh, if you think about it, there has been pending for quite some time now such critical issues as a new capital structure for our largest banks. There is Community Reinvestment Act reform. Uh, there is cryptocurrency regulation. Um, there are what are called the alphabet regulations that govern so much of bank uh, operations, and those have to be revised. There are languishing applications. And I think uh, an undersized board uh, inherently lacks the bandwidth for such a wide range of issues, and in particular, as you point out, the absence of a director uh, for supervision, I should say a vice chair for supervision. Raj, one thing that the Fed appears to have been able to do, because they just announced it a very short time ago, is a new set of restrictions on trading in securities and other things like commodities, cryptocurrencies, for the senior most members of the Fed. Uh, now, it's just come out, as I know, but essentially, as I understand it, it says you can do it through an exchange, uh, an index fund, but you otherwise can't do it. What do you think about those kind of restrictions? I think those restrictions make great sense because... Any time a sitting governor or a president of a reserve bank trades uh, in a particular security, hindsight is going to be perfect. And if you happen to uh, trade well, it's going to be criticized because of the information flow. I think uh, uh, the Fed really wants to be a bastion of transparency and probity. Uh, Raj, on another subject, we are spending a lot of our time these days on Ukraine and the crisis with Russia, the standoff, if I can call it that, over there. A lot of talk about sanctions, if in fact Russia does do something in Ukraine. And a lot of that talk about sanctions, I've noticed, focuses on the banking sector and what restrictions might be put in place. What do we know or infer or guess about what those could be? How does it affect, affect potentially the banks? Well, uh, we actually have a lot of experience here with the Iranian sanctions, and they demonstrated that a uh, sanctions program on a country's banks can be a powerful uh, economic weapon. But in order to be effective, there are really three prerequisites. First, it would have to be a joint effort with our allies. <clears throat> Second, we've got to deal with evasion, which will be inevitable by identifying the banks that are enabling the evasion. And third, the sanctions must really target a country's most significant banks. Otherwise, they would just be pinpricks. Have as sanctions, because you have experience with them in the past, have they been effective in changing the behavior of countries that we have an issue with? You know, where you have a relatively modern economy, such as Iran, the sanctions were, I think, very effective. I think they led to the agreement on uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, when you're, you have smaller countries, they are probably less important. But obviously, Russia has a large economy, and sanctions on their banking system 
if properly calibrated, could be very effective. Do the banks need to be taking steps right now to anticipate the possibility of having to do this, or can they really ramp up pretty quickly? I think, fortunately, they can ramp up quickly. They have a lot of experience in this area. It's not only the U.S., but the uh, uh, EU and uh, the United uh, Kingdom as well, uh, and Japan. So uh, this will not be something novel.